Well, our bodies start to change as soon as we hit midlife. And we're going to talk about that today. Actually, it starts out a little bit earlier. Um, you know, suddenly it affects, um, you know, our energy levels, our metabolism, weight issues, you know, where the weight is starting to move in different places. It might be our focus, it might even be our hair. And today, Annie Goodrow has joined me to talk about options for all of you that are struggling with the unique health and fitness issues that midlife presents. Now, Annie is a licensed nutritionist and health coach. She founded Vive, and she's gonna talk about the name of that because I thought it was so clever. She founded Vive Health and Wellness to support women struggling with menopause, feel hot, sexy, and confident again. I love those words. An endurance athlete, with 12 marathons and three Ironman triathlons, yes, you heard that correctly, under her belt, Annie lives what she preaches. A prior 25 plus year career as a brand consultant working with executives of Fortune 500 companies gave her a solid background to serve the wellness needs of those living busy lives. She's a regular speaker to the media, corporations, and lifestyle organizations on various topics of health. Welcome, Annie. So nice to have you here. Well, thank you. I, uh, I think that we're going to have a very exciting conversation today, Sherry. We are. We kind of started it before I hit the record button, and that, that is always fun. That, that's a, a precursor to, I know, what is going to be a fascinating conversation. First of all, you know, if you can, because I, I just can't make the bridge between the 25 year career as a brand consultant, Fortune 500 companies to, you know, a women's midlife women, you know, health coach, health, fitness, menopause, all of that coach. What happened? What what went on and how'd you get there? <laughs> Well, there was a little bridge and here it is. As I had that career and was very busy, I became also extremely stressed. And somebody had said to me, you know, Annie, I think that you would benefit from running because oh. it requires no skills and it doesn't require a membership anywhere. You can basically you know, with, with the help of runners and a little bit of an outfit, mm -hmm. uh, you can basically run anywhere, anytime. And that really appealed to me. And I started to, you know, sign up for races because I thought, well, I need a little goal. And so signing up for a race will help me. And eventually found myself with the opportunity of signing up for a full marathon. Wow. Because, you know, it was kind of the next thing. And I'm doing this while, you know, I'm running my agency. And um, after the year and completing that first marathon, I was I was completely hooked, completely hooked. And the organization that I had signed up with asked me if I would be helping with the coaching in the following year. And it was the beginning of a love affair. Mm -hmm. I never understood how much... Um, Coaching was so rewarding and we took women literally off the couch to the finish line. So a lot of women at midlife, a lot of older women too, there were some women in their 60s and 70s who wanted to do this and it was on their list or whatever the reason. Right. So eventually I thought, I need to find a way to pay my bills while I do this. Mm -hmm. And the nutrition school was a great avenue because nutrition is such a complex subject. Yes. It's confusing. And there seemed to be some new information every week that contradicts something that came out three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go back to school and then focus on the needs of women at midlife because this is when we need so much help. Yeah. Yes. Now, but, but I, I'm intrigued by the concept of a woman, you know, say 60 years old who has not been a runner um, to ever get herself in a fitness mode. And I don't know, did you coach people specifically to run or did you coach people to get healthy and get more fit? Whatever that might have been, swimming, walking, you know, strength training, whatever it was. 
Uh, great question. This was a running program. We also had a lot of walkers, um, but we also majority were runners. We did provide a little bit of nutrition advice, but very little, to be honest with you. Okay. And we also supported the program with what are the things that you need to do to do, you know, uh, injury prevention. So a lot of stretching and, you know, massage therapy, those types of things so that people protected their their muscles and their joints and um, and were successful in their endeavor. So what happens though in middle age? What's different? And, and is it different for women who are trying to, you know, because we need to bring in this menopause piece, this whole hormonal piece, because I'm sure it all impacts everything. Um, mm -hmm. Not just, am I going to get myself ready for a 5K as an example? Um, Talk a little bit about what you learned and, and have learned and continue to coach women on in that arena. Uh, you know, what do I do as, as a 50 year old, as a 60 year old, as a 70 year old, if I want to change things up? Sure. So menopause is, is a, is a huge basket. It, it starts with perimenopause and perimenopause can last for up to 10 years. Oh right. my God. So, yes, exactly. so is 10. So that's the stage before your periods actually stop. I'm assuming. Correct. So okay. menopause must be 12 consecutive periods that have been missed. Okay. It must be a full year. Okay. And a lot of women experience, oh, I didn't get my period. Then it came back. Then mm -hmm. it went away for three months. Then it came back. That is textbook perimenopause. Okay. And the experience of what I'm now going to call menopause, which includes perimenopause in here right now, you know, is very wide. And officially, the North American Menopause Society recognizes 34 official symptoms. 34. That's, That's a long list, right? Starting from brain fog, Yes, of course, the weight that you mentioned before, so many other symptoms. So the experiences of women through this can go from the benign. Some mm -hmm. women transition very easily and they're like, yay, no more periods, liberating, and mm -hmm. uh, they move on. And for some women, it's hell. Yeah. Because so many symptoms are off the charts, right? Of those so. Yes, that's right. And yeah. and it, this is a little bit of domino effect as well, because you can imagine that if a woman is not sleeping at night mm -hmm. during the day, she is now completely compromised her ability to great to have great regulation. Right. right. So if you don't feel like exercising. Right. You're not making sensible nutrition decisions because mm -hmm. you're tired. Right. And you're tired. all you want. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So you're not making the best decisions for yourself. You could be also having more alcohol because you're feeling like crap. Mm -hmm. Right. So there are all kinds of things that impact. So if anybody's listening, I want you to know, you know, like you are totally normal, whatever <laughs> your experience. Right. It's okay. It, you are not a bad person. It doesn't mean that, you know, you're lazy. A lot of women beat themselves up, right? Like, oh my God, you know, I'm, I'm not running a marathon, right. that kind of stuff. Right. Not at all. I actually don't recommend the big endurance sports for women at menopause. Okay. Look, I mean, that's a completely sports, like, like a marathon, like that's a right. triathlon, you yeah. know, why and why don't you recommend? And the reason being that, um, what the body needs now a little bit more of is shorter, more intense. Excuse me, I'm just going to have a bit of water. Women in exercise, absolutely. Um, but we need to make sure that we manage our cortisol levels, right? The stress hormone. And okay. when we exercise, the body naturally produces cortisol. It, it okay. makes sense, right? Because it needs to be a little bit on, on alert, right? You are recruiting a lot of energy out of the body. Okay. When you do endurance events, and I am talking about hours of effort, you're producing so much cortisol. Oh, wow. That it, it, it makes it a very difficult to lose weight, by the way. Isn't it ironic? Um, 
I'm shocked. It's, yes, it's very ironic. When we do shorter amount of exercise, such as, you know, these short, intense trainings, you know, they call them the sits, um, you release cortisol, but very quickly, within 20 minutes, the cortisol levels decrease. And that's what we want to see. That is a healthy cycle for the body. Too much cortisol all the time creates inflammation. And the last thing that we need in our body on an ongoing basis is this inflammation is like this silent fire that is in the body, right? It's creating all kinds of damage. So I encourage women to be looking at mild aerobic activity or intense, but very short. short. Okay. Yes. Short yeah. spurts. But talk about the, because you, this is what for all of you, just this is what Annie and I chatted briefly about before we got on this call was hormone therapy and the studies that were done in the US, I don't know, was it 15 years ago? It's okay. longer than that, actually. Okay. It was in the 80s. Okay, that actually, my own doctor, as well as I'm sure many doctors said off with hormones, you're, you're, you're done. You can't, I, I wasn't in menopause at that point, but the, the thought process carried through because even, you know, I had been on th hormones for a period of time and suddenly the doctor said, no, you have to get off those hormones. So to speak a little bit about hor what goes on in our bodies as women and why hormone therapy may be needed and even some of the fallacies, if you can, of that particular study that are now coming to light. Yes, and and it, it's it's a really it's a big tragedy because women were deprived of some great solutions. Mm. And not to say that hormone therapy, menopause hormone therapy, is the solution for everybody, but it is for a lot of women a great option to um, even out the symptoms of menopause and postmenopausal. Okay, so. Results were extrapolated from that study that basically led researchers to conclude that it was very dangerous for women, especially would be leading to cardiovascular events such as strokes, et cetera. So um, everybody went on panic mode and everybody got off. Mm -hmm. And for years, nobody bothered questioning these results. And nobody bothered really putting a new task team on it to see, you know, based on these results, are these really the conclusions? Mm -hmm. And it's only in the last three years that it has all been debunked. Wow. And while there are some risks, it absolutely has nothing to do with the level of risks that were originally concluded. So there is always risk to everything. I think that everybody knows this, right. any prescription drugs, right. Right. hormones, but these hormones can be lifesaver for many women that are having extremely intense symptoms, mm -hmm. right? So I think that um, uh, women should consult their doctors mm -hmm. to see if this is an option based on their risk factors, based on their history and family, <clears throat> excuse me, and make a decisions for themselves yeah. in conjunction with lifestyle choices sure. to adapt to what is going on in their bodies. Because to go back to your original question, when you're asking, you know, what is happening? And right. basically what is happening is our estrogen levels um, were pretty high. And suddenly through perimenopause, it starts to look a little bit like a, a ride at an amusement park, right? It <laughs> goes up and down, it goes up and down, and eventually settles quite low. Okay. Right? So there is a significant drop in what we now have. I'm postmenopausal three years, and I've been tested. My estrogen levels are, you know, tiny now. Right, right. right. This is what happens with us as we're women. Our testosterone levels also can be uh, dropping. Women also have testosterone. Right. Um, and it's often dismissed in the conversation because we associate it so much with a male hormone, but women have testosterone and even the testosterone decreases and, and it can affect our, 
our drive. Oh, interesting. Our like, hmm, okay. let's do this, right? Like our, and, and some oh, women experience amazing. that as well. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, and many of the consequences of the drop in estrogen are also not fully understood, such as why with menopause is the weight gathering in the midsection? Yeah. yeah. We know that there is a correlation with estrogen, but that exact pathway is not understood fully by science. It's frustrating. I know that. It is. It is. Right? Because women that are listening to this are probably going like, yeah, it's right. awful. Please, I want this to go away, right? Sure. But I have some options and we'll we'll talk about we'll that. We'll talk about that. Yeah, well, and also I, I asked this question even of my own doctor. Is there, is anyone studying why women are getting Alzheimer's more often than men at a, at a much higher rate, especially as they're older and mm -hmm. had a longer period of time without estrogen? And this was at the Mayo Clinic and the doctor said, there's no money. There's no money to do studies like that. And therefore, they're not going to find the answer. So it's kind of depressing. But if you've been off of hormones for a period of time, or you're, oh, maybe we should back up going into, so it's not just a hormone discussion about taking hormone supplements, but also lifestyle changes. How, how do we change the way we eat? Your, your, you know, your bridge was basically mm -hmm. going to nutrition school, what changes? Because can we eat the same way we ate when we were 35 years old? You know, once we're moving into perimenopause for some women and menopause and then postmenopause, what, how yes. does food play a role? Food plays a huge role. Food is, is, is our foundation, right? It, it truly is our foundation. There's two critical elements in our foundation. I always say food and movement. And when it comes to food, absolutely what used to work at 35 is no longer going to work 20 years later. Okay. You know, your needs are different. Person. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's a little bit of, yeah, I know. And it's a little bit of, what has happened in the last 20 years also for you, right? Have you been a super stressed executive um, raising a family? So you had double duty. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps also you are um, like many part of the sandwich generation people who are also mm -hmm. supporting or helping caring for an aging parent. Mm -hmm. So that spells you are like, you have that cortisol that we talked about, right? That hormone, that stress hormone is firing on all cylinders all the time. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're stretched really, really thin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's kind of a triple whammy of things happening. Not only are you going through menopause in your own individual way, but you are probably putting yourself last on the list. So your own self-care is terrible because there is no energy, no time, mm -hmm. right? And 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 um, therefore, you're also not taking care of yourself in terms of making sure you have weekly activity movements and so on. So a lot of things are kind of factoring on top of each other. So I always start with nutrition because it is what gives us the most energy. Okay. It's also what we can decrease inflammation with. So it's it's an important time of life to really relook really at um, not just what we eat, but how we eat and when we eat. So okay. really important to make sure that we are getting so many more vegetables than we ever did. I know our mothers told us to eat our vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> we have heard this. And nauseam. Right. But if there is a time in your life where you are going to be getting the most benefits, it's now. Wow. That's because a you need the high fiber. Fiber is like a giant sweeper in the a swiffer in the body. Oh my. Oh, that's <clears throat> it helps clean, right? And you are detoxing from all of the hormones that you you have been going up and down, right? Right. right. You absolutely need to be supporting good gut health, which is linked to your mental health. At menopause, this is so important. So you want to be feeding good gut health. And there is nothing more beneficial to the gut than plant foods, fiber. So 
lots and lots of vegetables will really help. And then the other thing that I always recommend for women is really being mindful of your protein. Okay. Having enough protein because protein gives you energy, but also makes you feel full longer. Okay. It will make you avoid the snacking in North America. Snacking is a big sport. Yeah. It's a, you know, and the pandemic did not facilitate this. It it just (laughs) added to the problem. And the real epidemic that we have is metabolic syndrome, which is a combination of, you know, blood sugar levels that are too high, pre-diabetes, diabetes, cardiovascular issues, right? They're all linked to one thing and it's too much insulin, too too much um, all the time. Okay. So we want to remove the snacking. And in order to do that, we need to have more protein. Okay. And protein- right from the get-go. Do you recommend your clients, you know, some are vegetarians, do you recommend they go the tofu route or do they get it through vegetables if that's possible? Um, and those that eat meat, do you say, you know, add it, add more? What 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 are you telling people? Well, if people are vegetarians, I have nothing against that. It, when people are vegan, that's a little bit more challenging to get all the protein for sure. But with the intention and, and enough time, definitely. It just takes a little bit more prep. Okay. Um, but um, the body loves variety. Oh. So if you are a vegetarian that also enjoys fish, but also enjoys plant pl- protein, pardon me, <clears throat> then that's beautiful. Because the more variety you have, the greater the nutrition you are getting. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Right? The last thing the body wants is to be eating the same thing all the time. Sure, sure. And how many, when I think back to all the crazy diets that oh. you know, Atkins and got, you know, I don't know, all those things that you order and that comes in <clears throat> yes. delivered years ago, it was the same stuff all the time. You know, yes, chicken, broccoli. Yeah. How can you do Batman. lasagna, you know, five days a week <laughs> and make it so small that you could eat it? I mean, that's right. Oh, gross. Um, so as a frame of reference, though, it's 20, 25 grams of protein at each meal. Okay. Okay. So if you eat breakfast, fine. If you don't eat breakfast, fine. But the first meal that you have, always making sure that you have sufficient amount of protein. protein. Okay. Interesting. Right? So that's really going to helping women. And often it's one of the things that I see a lot of starch, a lot of carbs, Mm -hmm. but not enough protein. So women are hungry and they have sent their insulin on this monster ride. So they're also depleted because that's actually leading to fatigue. And that's the last thing that we need as women at midlife. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, at any age, actually, I, my daughter's yes. 35 and she's got babies that are twins and it's, it, mm. you're, you're describing some of the same symptoms, even at 35, where it's way too many carbs and because oh. it's easy to grab and yes, she's exhausted. Absolutely. Yes. So it's throughout our lives. But part of it is what I hear you say is an awareness, maybe at midlife, that we never had the opportunity or the mindset to embrace earlier, you know, because we could get by with doing some of those things and we just go have a big cup of coffee, you know, and, and off, totally. we, you know, go back to yes. work, whatever it might have been. But at midlife, we don't get by with all those little cheats that we got Correct. by with younger when we were the, young. The, the wheels start to fall off at this time. And that's why it's so important to be carving the time for nutrition that will work for us. I often also say it coincides with a time where kids hopefully are out of the house. There's a little bit more time for self, right? And it is really, really perfect timing to say, here's a new set of priorities, right? We're going to make time for, you know, the cooking and the prep of vegetables and Mm -hmm. to make sure that we also have always good protein Mm -hmm. to come along with this. So it is a perfect time to 
make us number one priority. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Speak a little bit about alcohol, because that's one of the things that I have noticed um, in the U.S. specifically um, and in in England um, that I see many women who are my age drink a, a good amount um, and and they're comfortable doing that almost on a regular basis. Um, yeah, so talk about what does alcohol, what kind of a role does alcohol play? It's not snacking, you know, It's and it may be hard liquor versus a glass of wine. Yes, yes. And it's such a good question because um, we have so much more knowledge about the impact of alcohol on our health. Mm. So one is I am not anti-alcohol. I'm French Canadian. My parents had a glass of wine with dinner. It, right. I was I was raised that this was the norm, not necessarily that that it is what we should all do, but I have nothing against it. But what science tells us now is that Alcohol is harder on women. We know that because it needs to be detox. We need to detox literally the alcohol from our body through our liver. Our liver is smaller than men. It's okay. it's um, it's a harder task for our body to do that. And midlife, when we're already quite taxed with all of the hormones fluctuating and all that, mm -hmm. it seems to be like we're adding another twenty pound root sack on our back of our our you know our back and okay. we're trying to go for a hike. Wow. Um, we also know that alcohol is linked to so many cancers. So even if you are not predisposed, this is a critical factor, right? Yeah. Breast cancer, colon cancer, um, colorectal cancer. Um, there's a couple more. I can't I'm remember depressing. right now. That's depressing. Yes. <laughs> yes. So what we know on the other side is uh, and most people will be probably familiar with the the whole concept of the blue zones. Yes, yes. Right, discovered yes. by Dan Buettner. We actually just did a follow up. Uh, That's right. All of you, it's on YouTube. Uh, yes, and I highly recommend it. Highly yeah. recommend it. And I just finished his book last weekend mm. because he did an update on it. Mm -hmm. And the drinkers outlive the non drinkers now. Here's for the little caveat, right? Because it's okay. never just black and white and it's not a carte blanche <laughs> to right. be opening it. You know, uh, uh, it's a bit early as we are recording this. It'd be a little early for a glass of wine. Yeah. Um, but two things. One is that it's usually one glass of wine. Right. And it is always in the context of food and socialization. Yeah. yeah. And that's also one thing to consider as we think about food and activity is that nothing works in isolation in the body. Mm. Nothing. Wow. So you could be the, you know, could be even like having that perfect diet, but if you're having a, a, a horrible emotional life mm. and where there's a lot of trauma that is unresolved, where you're not having positive relationships and all that, it doesn't matter how much kale you eat and how much salmon and right. organic this and organic that. Everything works together holistically in the body. Yeah, yeah. That's, so that's really brilliant. That just that statement, you have all of this stress in your life and you don't deal with it. You can't eat enough kale or you eat a bag of red licorice or you drink a bottle of wine. <laughs> you can't sit and, and, and then eat healthy the next day and compensate. It's not like a, a bank account. Whatever you take out, you can put in the next day. Your body. Exactly. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. It's, exactly. That's fascinating. Yeah, there is a beautiful um, MD in the U.S. called the Luanne Brizendine, and and she wrote a book. The title says it all uh, in terms of how she considers midlife, and she calls it the upgrade. Oh. Midlife with midlife comes this beautiful opportunity to take our life to the next level yeah. and make it and carve it the way that works for us, meets our needs, because health is not one size fits all. So right. I'd right. like to repeat that because it's important, right? Everybody's on TikTok and social media trying different things. And the reality is that 
we are all unique. Mm-hmm. Um, so I love the concept of the upgrade. That is totally yeah. the opportunity that women have at midlife to create the life that they want based on their own terms and their values. Yes. Yes. I, I, I couldn't agree more. That's what extraordinary women is all about is really mm-hmm. what are we going to do with that next chapter? Because truly, and Annie, I think you'd agree. It doesn't matter where you are almost in the world. We are a generation of women who have potentially, if we have good health, we're blessed with good health. We have 30 years in front of us maybe right. 40 years in front of us. And what are we going to do with that next chapter? Um, which is different. You know, our mothers looked at it and thought, gosh, maybe if I'm lucky, I'll get to 70, 72, 73. So I'm just going to drink umbrella drinks in Florida, you know, on the, on, on the beach, you know, well, you can't do that for 30 years. I mean, it's no <laughs> can. Um, so, you know, it presents an opportunity, uh, to shift, our lives, but but I'm going to take it back to even to movement and to to our nutrition in that it's not and and so, this kind of happens to me and I'm being very honest. It's like I want the fix, you know. It's like of oh, course I want the fix, and then I'll be able to you know kind of fall back into some my some of my old habits. Um, but it's kind of that in out you know, I'm going to do the bad, but I'm also going to do the good or try to do more good than I do bad for my body. But it's actually a whole up leveling of how I'm going to live in the next 20 years or the next 30 years, however many I have. It's not something, it's not a bandaid. It's correct. It's a, it's a shift. It's a huge. And I love what you said because the average woman has 33 years. That's officially after menopause on average. And if you had a natural menopause, some women were thrown into menopause because of hysterectomies and those kinds of things. So we're talking about natural menopause. The average is 33 years. It's huge. And we, we know that in order to remain independent, which we all wish, right? Sound mind. Um, a, a healthy body, what we are talking about here is not our lifespan, what we're talking about here is our health span, right? Yeah. All those years spent in good health. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's quality it of life. Or, yeah. Exactly. It yeah. requires the nutrition. It requires the movement. It requires making sure that our muscles are strong because we need to fight the natural loss of muscles. Yeah. Which will naturally occur. This is not something bad. Okay. If we let it, but we do not have to sit in the back seat. Okay. Right? Yeah. We can totally in the end driver's seat here to be proactive. Same thing with our bone health, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Also tremendously affected by the drop of estrogen. Many things that are in our power to completely shift the course. In fact, and your near listeners will appreciate this, only 20% of our genes will determine how we age and how and, and our quality oh, of wow. life. Yeah. So that means overwhelming majority, right? The 80% is based on lifestyle choices. Yeah. yeah. That Isn't that control. empowering? Yeah. Yes. That we control. You know, what we get frustrated by are those things in life that we'd like to change and we can't do anything about. Well, this is something of 80% of it, I actually can control. That feels good. <laughs> yes. Feels and so- there, it's not the one magic thing. It's not mm-hmm. the kale. It's not the one time in the gym. It is, it's the gym. It's the nutrition. It's the sleep. It's, it's the Friendship. emotional environment. Absolutely. Right. Mm-hmm. It's the, you know, what are you do- doing in terms of hobbies? Mm-hmm. How are you finding purpose? All of those things together will make you thrive. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. No question of it. And this is a perfect segue. You being French, you know, I asked you about the name of your company and you said it's really a a, a kind of a funny take on joie de vivre. Um, So to share with us the name of your company and and what you can do for women. Sure. So it is called Vive. Mm -hmm. V-E-E-V, health and wellness, and uh, that whole, I wanted something that encapsulated the primary 
values that I espouse, which is we only get a one go at this. Yes. We let's enjoy it for everything that we can mm-hmm. right? within right. reason. Yeah. So when I started the company, it was always with the focus of being able to serve women at midlife and beyond, mm-hmm. either through private coaching or group programs. Okay. Some people require the private coaching or, mm-hmm. or simply prefer the one-on-one. And a lot of people thrive in the group environment. So I offer both. Okay. Um, Okay. To support women with various things. So as a, say, let's talk about one-to-one coaching. W- what would, what, what happens? What's the process? If someone yeah. contacts you and says, I want to work with you. And also, I just have to say, whether it's group or individual one-to-one coaching, accountability is everything. Mm-hmm. And I think we've also learned that there, we can make connections online. And those connections yes. really do impact our life, whether it's me calling my health coach once a week or however often it is, or me being part of a group. We make connections, which I don't think anybody really bought into until before COVID, but mm-hmm. uh, we now know. Uh, yes. So, yeah. yeah. So talk yeah, about and <clears throat> The process is very simple, right? We do a full intake. Uh, No different than if you were to go see your doctor, making sure that we have a full picture of what has been going on. What are the symptoms that you're experiencing? What are your goals? And I customize a wellness plan for you that is holistic. Okay. So it's never just the food. As I said, we don't do everything all at the same time. There's a process, but it is a six months process because of what you just said. We need to change some habits and those habits take time. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. And through the six months, we have time to really establish some solid roots and some solid foundation for the person then to just be able to make this part of their, you know, day to day life, if you want. And then we have weekly sessions, just like you and I are doing right now on Zoom, recorded, And I review the activity. I review the food journal. And and the person also also gets a challenge from me every week. So it helps implement the uh, the protocols. It helps the person um, challenge themselves. Because the fact is, is if I'm 55 and I'm now going to try to turn, you know, direction of this boat is going to take time and it's going to take more than one attempt, right? We are going to have to work a little bit at a time slowly. Yeah. So I keep you accountable. And I also show you basically the mirror because we don't see what goes on, right? We don't see a little bit of the patterns that may be showing up. We don't see maybe the little excuses that we are... (laughs) falling into and we, that's we can just pretend really, really well can't we we can oh pretend. yeah oh no i don't eat you know how many of us fill out what we've eaten if we do it at the end of the week we are the picture of perfection oh yes <laughs> so, always yes, absolutely <laughs> oh i'm not talking about the croissant you know the chocolate croissant or the dessert mm. or whatever it was that i might have snuck in there i forget those things <laughs> <laughs> yes so the accountability is really good and it gives people yeah. strategies right um and it is custom to that individual so everybody has a his- history genetics okay. um So I review all of that and um, that's how people, you know, get stronger, lose the weight, feel better, start sleeping better. Thank goodness. All the, all of those things. Yeah. That's and 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 then coaching sessions, you know, you're just, you're doing the same thing. I'm assuming to some extent with a, with a small group of people. That's right. It's always, it's always very intimate because you know, we are looking for quality experience, mm-hmm. um, but in the group coaching, it's longer and it's nine months and uh, it really gives an opportunity for women to really get on the other side. Right? Okay. And we climb the mountain together. Okay. And there are experts that I bring on. So it also oh. makes for a very interesting experience. Okay. 
Okay, this is this sounds absolutely fascinating, truly. Um, do you ever maybe I shouldn't ask this question. Do you ever have people who who kind of flunk out of the program who say I can't do this or do and what do you do when someone's struggling? Mhm. Mm definitely. Um in over the years it hasn't happened often, but it has happened. Yeah. And the reality is that um this work is not skin deep. It requires going inwards mm -hmm. um, because we all sabotage, right? We all have tendencies to, oh, I'm going to sneak that there or I right. said I'm going to go for a walk. Well, and also if it's six months, six months in a one-to-one, -one, nine months in group coaching, a lot can happen in that process. Yes, a lot. exactly. Yeah. So some people... Um, mentally feel that they are ready. Okay. And for some reason, there are emotional reasons that are blocking okay. their ability to do the work. Mm -hmm. And um, and I have seen it. I have seen it happen. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I usually recommend those people go uh, with more of a social worker to work okay. on what is going on. What's what are those blockages? Because okay. then they can come back and work with me again. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you know, even therapy, whatever it might be. That. Oh works. yes. Or if somebody has a, you know, a life changing situation, That's right. you know, with parents or adult children. Adult children are, in some ways, more stressful than the little ones. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I can attest to that. Um, the problems are bigger. Um, yes, absolutely. <laughs> sometimes you do have to pull back a little bit, but you know that doesn't mean what I love about what you, you're talking about is that even though those stressors happen, how can I best manage it? it? It's not maybe it's not just food, but how can I manage it with exercise? How can I relieve stress? in mm -hmm. a way that um, helps me to make to make good food choices, even though I'm feeling this external pressure. Yeah, that's absolutely. Really, really amazing. So what what is a typical, if that's appropriate, a typical client? Like what what do you see most often with mm -hmm. life women? What are what are their challenges? Well, I would say that, um, and this was a bit of a surprise for me when I started my business, but it just keeps on being confirmed is, is the, the top three concerns are the weight loss, the hot flashes and the, the sleep disturbances. Okay. That makes sense. And, you know, the weight loss to a certain degree, one could think, well, and as long as it's not too out of control, mm -hmm. you know, while it is frustrating, um, you know, it is a bit superficial. But the reality, the reality is, is how it affects women's lives. Oh, right. I about that. And so a lot of my clients have their own businesses or are senior executives, mm -hmm. and they start to not want to show up. So it precludes them from showing up with confidence okay. in their relationships at work. Um, a lot of the entrepreneurs that I work with, they have to speak, they have to show up on social media, and then they despise how they look. Yes. So they go, I don't want to do this. I will not show up this way. So it's costing them big in yeah. their professional lives and their businesses. It's costing them yeah. loss of sales. But also it has a big ripple effect in their personal lives. Yeah. Right? Thanks. Intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they get frustrated with themselves mm -hmm. because they think that they're doing something wrong. So it, it has a ripple effect on the quality of our relationships. So it is never just about the weight. No. Uh, that that's the title of your book. It should be. <laughs> it's never just about the weight. It isn't. I love that you talked about how it affects your self con confidence in every arena, whether it's professional, mm -hmm. if you're married, you know, or have a significant other, 
the intimate intimacy in that relationship. If you don't have somebody, your willingness to meet someone, to go on a blind date, um, because mm -hmm. we all have it in our minds that nobody wants to look at a fat woman. You know, it's bad That's enough. That's right. Oh. Um, and I'm speaking for myself here, you know, I'm putting uh, the words out there because there's some real strong societal biases against both. And oh, what, my God, if you happen to be in that category of both. Truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I try to approach it from a point of view of, you know, that excess weight um, we need to be really careful about because it has um, a lot of detrimental health consequences. Right. But of course, as we get control over that and we start can, you know, sh sh you know, shed the weight, yeah. um, our confidence comes back up wow. and yeah. a lot of women, a lot of women make decisions after that to change things in their lives that they go, that's not working anymore. Right. right. Because they are transforming, they are changing. And that's, it's like <clears throat> true butterfly moments. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fascinating though, because it doesn't take much of a weight loss to some extent. If you're looking at it from a mindset of I'm getting healthier and I'm starting to notice that something is changing in my body because I'm choosing health, I'm basically choosing health and fitness. Um, it doesn't take much and and the motivation or the yeah the motivation to continue just skyrockets it's it's not absolutely like to lose 30 pounds before we're motivated you know sometimes three pounds is motivating because we're on the right yes path. yeah that's right and you you feel like you have a little bit more energy because suddenly we've been tweaking the diet. So uh, mm -hmm. you're sleeping better as well. And the type of exercises that you're now doing also, you can feel it. Yeah. And that's yeah. empowering as well. Right. Um, so lots, it, it, it all really builds on us. And, and before we got on, on our, on our recording, I was remembering a client that, um, to this day, when I say what she shared with me, I, I get goosebumps, but she was a entrepreneur, early fifties, a mom of four and who had obviously had had a busy life as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And she said to me at the end of our program, she was part of the, the group, the long-term group program. She said, you know, I had almost given up on myself. Oh, wow. Yeah. That gives and me that too. Oh my God. Totally, right? Yeah. Isn't that incredible? And I don't think that she is alone no. in th those feelings. Right. Because we think, oh, it's just this damn thing that happens yeah. at midlife. And now I'm getting wrinkles and I've got the double chin and uh, a lot of women lose hair, yeah. um, uh, which for women is we so associate yeah. femininity yeah. with our hair, right? So right. important. And my boobs are getting all like saggy and you're like, and I've got this thing in the middle. Ah, right. Right. And, ah, you know, there are no options because there's been lack of information. Mm -hmm. You know, medical doctors get very, very little training on menopause, right? Uh, the right. education is, it makes me so angry yeah. um, because half of the world goes to menopause, right? right. And I'm, it's not an if, it will happen. Right. Um, and they get this amount of education. They also get four hours of, of education on nutrition. So they cannot even <clears throat> guide us properly. No. So no. no wonder women feel frustrated, which is which makes me want to work even harder because um, there are options clearly and we do not have to suffer yeah yeah but that's what you what you shared though of that client i was almost to the point of giving up and giving up on myself and yet on paper everyone would judge that woman to be very very successful and Correct. inside she felt like she was giving up on herself was really close to saying this is it you know yeah. i just i'm just going to this, I just have to get used to looking like this and feeling like this and showing up like this. And yeah, 
Yeah. I, well, Vive, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> there, are, there are options. The difference is your doctor's not going to give you the options. You're going to, you're going to have to do your homework and find yes. where you need to land to get the kind of support and strong, really good advice because there's a lot out there that's not. Yes. Um, Correct. Yeah. Uh, so Annie, don't I, go on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, or even, you know, any of those, um, because sometimes they're more about marketing than they are about actually, like you said, all of the different parts that make up who we are and how we feel about life and how much energy or joie de vivre we have in life. Um, it's not just nutrition. It's not just taking handfuls of supplements. It's not eating tons of kale. It's not running the marathon. If I could only do that, well, I can't do that. So I'm not going to do anything. And, um, it's all of the, all the different pieces that, um, I just love that what you've shared today. I really have. It's I'm so glad. I'm awesome. so glad. Yeah. Yes. Now, all of the information that Annie talked about, um, or her company, Vive, dot ca will be down in the show notes you also mentioned um the author that um well i'll make yes. sure I get that information and put that in the show notes too so people can check on that blue notes or the blue blue zones um is another um resource i'll make sure to put that down in the show notes also um dan butner did a follow-up video that shows up on youtube which was really quite impactful because he went back to i think it was an area in costa rica that was very successful sorry i'm in paris and you can hear um the please um but um i think it was costa rica where the parents did fantastic they were blue zone and then the garbage food came in and the children are no are no longer what he would consider a blue zone the numbers are so bad um correct it was fascinating it was really fascinating but also as annie says read his book um because it it wakes us up you know we have to educate ourselves you know that's right are not they're not capable that's not their that's that's not their wheelhouse right correct yeah, yeah. they're that's, great at solving other types of problems yeah. but prevention we have 80 percent. remember that ladies right 80 percent. so okay. what a wonderful empowering number to know that um you can make a massive difference in your health yeah love it love it thank you annie so much thank you thank today. you and we might have to have a follow-up because i think we could talk further about all of these same topics so thank you i so appreciate your time my pleasure thank you well everyone i just finished up that fabulous conversation with annie from vive.ca it was incredible you know what I took away from it, I hope you did too, is that the next chapter of our lives is a phenomenal opportunity that maybe no generation has really had, no generation of women have really had before us. And to learn that 80% of our quality of life and our longevity of life, you know, past the age of 50 is really in our control feels good. It feels really good because we have the opportunity to make our next chapters as fabulous as we want them to be. All the information is down in the show notes that we shared in um, the conversation, myself and Annie. And, um, you know, if you like this episode, please subscribe, uh, join us and, and share it. Why not? So take care. Abiento. <laughs>